Lauren, thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see you this morning on this third Sunday of Easter. Uh, thank you so much for your presence with us. Those of you who are joining us online, thank you for your presence with us as well. Uh, th there is, in your those of you who are here in the sanctuary, uh, there is a uh, connection card inside your worship bulletin. Please take that connection card out and let us know that you're here. Let us know how you're serving. Let us know if there's any way that we can be praying for you and your family. Those of you who are joining us online, there's an online version of the connection card. Please let us know uh, how uh, that you're worshiping with us, first of all, but also how we can uh, be praying for you and your family. Let me say thank you so much for your help last week in our 13th Rise Against Hunger. We uh, did uh, package up 10,000 meals. Thank you for those of you who came and, and offered your manual labor. Thank you for those of you who uh, contributed to, uh, to, the, uh, to the fund to raise the money for the grain and the rice that we packed in the meals. But thank you for your support. Uh, those uh, those uh, uh, 10,000 meals uh, went uh, uh, somewhere in the world where it was needed most. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you for helping us uh, make a difference. We're here this morning on this, uh, on this uh, third Sunday of Easter, and our opening hymn is Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. And if you will listen to the, uh, pay attention to the first stanza, you will see how our, the, our new hymnal received its name. Uh, and there's a note on the left side of the hymn that uh, Oh for a Thousand Tongues, written by Charles Wesley, uh, once had 18 stanzas. Uh, uh, we are only going to sing one through four this morning. So if you would, turn to page one in the new hymnal. Let's stand as you're able and sing together. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. <laughs>
peace of Christ be with you. Would you please turn and share the peace of Christ with those around you? Would you please now join me in our call to worship, adapted from Psalm 136 as it's listed in your bulletin. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. His steadfast love endures forever. Let us now recite together the Apostles' Creed and affirm our common Christian belief. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, you deserve all praise, honor, and glory. You love us enough to interrupt our lives and show us what beauty looks like in the face of horror. You crashed into history at just the right time to save us and show up in our lives to remind us of the joy of that salvation. Because of you, we have hope where the world has none. We confess that our Sin seems to be an inescapable issue. And as we draw closer to you, we become increasingly aware of it. Forgive us, we pray. Let us flourish in your grace and have the courage to not only feel remorse, but seek repentance in changing our behavior to draw closer to your son, Jesus. Release us from the shackles of shame that we might live into the freedom that you have called us towards. Lord, our, our human needs are ever before us, and they pull our focus from you. Our anxieties over life's uncertainties and our fixations on the immediate blind us to the eternal work that you are engaged in all around us, all the time. Open our eyes to see the many reasons we have to be grateful, that we might shift our focus onto what you are doing and away from what we cannot. Lord, we pray for the calamity and the violence and war raging across the globe. We pray for your intervention, for your justice and the expedience of your return, that the Prince of, Pre P the Prince of Peace may reign on earth as he does in heaven. 
Spirit, hear the groanings of our heart that we cannot form into words. Speak to us this morning through your Holy Spirit and Pastor Bruce that we might be transformed and renewed and inspired and encouraged. Let us not only hear but act upon what we hear, that we might be known as those who walk with Jesus. And as we await your word, we join our voices with those throughout history who have prayed the words that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As always, we thank you for your continued uh, generosity and giving, not only in your financial resources, but in how you steward your time and yourselves and your love and your affections for the people of this community and of this city. We encourage you to give in the manner that you're accustomed. So if that's digitally through the app of the website, you can do that. If you'd like to send a check into the church through snail mail, we still receive that. You can do that or bring it in. We'd love to see you during the week. Or if it is your custom to put your connection card with your offering in the uh, plate as you exit, those plates are located in the narthex, you know where they are. Let us continue worship now with our anthem, Let All Creation. <laughs>
Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Sarah and Lauren and Chris and Jordan, who's filling in for Sean today. Thank you so much for your presence with us. And thank you, Bob. Always bless us. The, uh, the chance. And thank you, Chris, uh, for, uh, for filling in for Jeff these last two Sundays. Uh, and you've noticed the last two Sundays, the, uh, the Chancel Choir is away, has been away, and uh, we appreciate the Chancel Singers while they're away, but we'll look forward to the Chancel Choir being back next week and Jeff being back, uh, but you all have done a great job. Thank you. Good morning again. It is good. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, it is good to see you. Those of you who are joining us online as well, thank you for your presence with us also. The scripture reading for this third Sunday of, uh, of Easter comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. Will you hear the word of the Lord as given to us uh, from the Gospel of Luke? While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while, they were, and while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem." You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Don't you wish you could have been a fly on the wall in that room on that resurrection day evening? Cleopas and, the other un, and another unnamed follower had just burst back into the room where the disciples and their companions were gathered uh, after running back to Jerusalem from Emmaus to, support, to report their sighting of Jesus. Now, Luke doesn't collaborate John's record of Jesus appearing to Mary, but portrays the disciples as exercised and saying, uh, the Lord is risen indeed, uh, and he has, he has appeared to Simon. Now, can you imagine the levels of energy, the levels of excitement, astonishment, fear, hope in that room? I imagine all of them were trying to talk at the same time. And Luke writes, while they were talking about this, referencing the sightings that had already taken place uh, uh, the, on that first resurrection day, Luke says, Jesus himself stood among them. Luke's way of saying, Pardon the interruption. Luke record, Luke's record gives an image of 20 to 25, if you count them all up, uh, or, uh, people in the room, including the disciples and their companions, and now uh, Cleopas and his, uh, and his companion, um, all trying to sort out what it all means for their families and Israel. Will it be revealed? Uh, that by Jesus or from, from Jesus or some supernatural means, what will happen next? They didn't know what was going to happen next. Does the fact that a few of them saw Jesus alive mean that, uh, the, that he has come to his senses and he will now overthrow the Roman government? 
Or does this uh, mean all of them will be arrested and suffer the same fate? Recalling Jesus earlier, what, what he said to them earlier, uh, if you want to be my, my disciple, you must take up your own cross and follow me. We're either going to be appointed to high places in Jesus' new government, or we're going to be hanged, one or the other. Uh, while, while they were all talking about this, Jesus himself interrupts the discussion and stood among them. He interrupts all the conflicting emotions, the fears and the anxieties, the speculations about their well-being and future with peace be with you. Don't you wish Jesus would interrupt some of the, of the discussions that we have with each other? Don't you wish Jesus would, uh, 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 would interrupt the, the rancorous political discussions that we have with each other? Really what we'd like Jesus to do is to smite those who disagree with our political uh, opinions, but, uh, but that's not, uh, we shouldn't be that. But don't you wish Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus himself could interrupt and stand in the middle of the Situation Room at the White House while Iran is launching 200 ballistic missiles and drones toward Israel? Or, or maybe on the floor of the Senate. Or maybe on the floor of the House of Representatives. Don't you wish Jesus could interrupt and stand in the middle of the United Nations? Which reminds us, there were opposing political views in the room on the evening of the resurrection. Remember, Simon the Zealot was there, as well as Levi or Matthew the tax collector. Now, after Jesus' death, Simon may have been planning to rejoin, uh, rejoin the insurrection against Rome. Um, and Matthew may have been considering going back to his old job for Rome, working for Rome. I can imagine during Jesus' ministry with these two, Jesus standing between Simon and Matthew uh, when they got into heated political discussions uh, after, uh, uh, and Jesus breaking up the fight. Don't you wish Jesus would interrupt our anxious discussions and moments of concern about our future? Luke says, while they were talking about this, while they were talking about all these things, Jesus himself, now uh, that seems kind of uh, comical to me for Luke to have to say Jesus himself, but remember he was writing, he was writing uh, later uh, than this, uh, and there were theories that, uh, that it was an, uh, not really Jesus or an imposter, or that it was, a, that it was a, uh, a ghost or apparition that appeared to them. So Luke is, Luke is uh, uh, emphasizing here, Jesus himself stood among them. Jesus himself opposed to an imposter, uh, uh, someone posing as to be Jesus. Jesus himself, and not merely a ghost or apparition. Jesus himself interrupted everything weighing on their hearts and minds with peace be with you. And Jesus' interruption and appearing just about Put them over the emotional edge. Luke says they, will, they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Now, we must empathize with the group on this one. Uh, I don't know about you. Well, actually, I do pretty much know about you. We all would be startled and terrified too. Uh, no text or phone call to let them know he was arriving. No warning. Not even a knock on the door. Uh, even though uh, they had already seen him alive a couple of times, some of them, that day, earlier that day, boom, Jesus himself was standing there alive. We would be startled and terrified too. But I'm amazed, however, at the lack of empathy from Jesus. It seems like, it seems like he was a little impatient with them for being startled and terrified. Um, why are you frightened? Why are we frightened? Uh, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at me. Touch me. A ghost doesn't have skin and bones like I have. And after Jesus showed them his hands and feet, and then based on other text, resurrection texts, he, he was also showing them the scars from the nails that the Romans, uh, Roman soldiers used to affix him to the cross. Um, Luke says something um, after Jesus shows him his hands and feet that we typically overlook. Luke says, while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. While in their joy, 
they were disbelieving and still wondering. Someone called this a collision of conflicting emotions. Um, oh, there was rejoicing and, celebra uh, and, and celebration and joy after the initial shock subsided. But in their joy, Luke says, there was also unbelief and skepticism and wondering. They had just witnessed the religious authorities manipulate the Roman government to, squ uh, to squash all of their hopes and dreams by putting Jesus on the cross. And, and they, by the way, were still subject to, uh, to those powers. And they were fearing for their own lives. But here is Jesus alive, stronger than ever, standing among them and, and hungry. He was hungry. I'm so glad to hear that we'll, we will be eating fish after we receive our resurrected bodies, right? And now that's not, that's not as far-fetched as you might think uh, over in uh, John's epistle, uh, uh, 1 John chapter 3. John says, Beloved, right now we are children. We are God's children. What we're going to be hasn't been revealed yet. All of it hasn't been revealed yet. Um, what we do know, what we do know, what has been revealed is this. When we see him, when we see him, we will be like him. Luke says, Jesus asked us if we had anything to eat. The only food we had was uh, with all of the company in the house uh, was one piece of broiled fish in the refrigerator. So we, we gave it to him and he ate it right in front of us. Luke doesn't gift us with a lot of detail here. I wish he had. But I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking uh, somebody fixed up some black beans and rice, or if you're from the south, some hush puppies and grits to go with the broiled fish. Uh, and, and I'm thinking that Jesus sat down and took his time eating, uh, enjoying the broiled fish and the hush puppies and grits, and enjoying his disciples. Maybe grits and fish will be on the menu at the heavenly feast when we, that we reference in our communion liturgy. While in their joy, while in their joy, they, they were disbelieving and still wondering. And in our joy, sometimes we find it hard to believe. And we still wonder and ask, well, what does it all mean? What does this mean for me today? But of course, this very text of Jesus appearing, inviting the disciples to touch him and eat fish in front of, uh, in front of them, and eating fish in front of them, creates a lot of disbelieving joy. It creates a lot of questions in our minds about Jesus' resurrected body, a physical body that could be touched and, and could eat fish, uh, but could appear and disappear out of their sight and, and eventually be taken up to heaven, which we, will, which we will observe in about four weeks. There have been questions about this since the day, since the first day of his appearance. Paul spent a lot of time uh, uh, in his first letter to the church at Corinth uh, trying to answer uh, the questions uh, about Jesus' resurrection. That's in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, if you'd like to, like to read it. And we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, but what does the resurrection mean for us right now? What difference does it make to us right now? That Jesus appeared uh, 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 flesh and bone, sitting down and eating fish. Well, first of all, it means that our faith is it informed by the, by the teaching that there is simply an indestructible element of the human life, a soul, that comes to the body, comes into the body at birth, maybe before birth, uh, and returns to God uh, uh, at our death? Our souls do indeed return to God who gave them. But resurrection is more than life after death, or more than simply returning to God. In the Jewish world of the first century, resurrection meant a new embodied life in God's new world, a life after a, a, a life after death, a life after life after death. When we see him, John says, we will be like him, a changed physical body uh, and no longer subject to the hardships of this life. It's a central affirmation of our faith. In our communion liturgy, we, we say together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. But listen, <clears throat> this and other, the other resurrection stories do not necessarily encourage the church 
to spend a lot of time contemplating and speculating about, about the day uh, uh, we will receive resurrected bodies and whether those bodies uh, will be eating fish or not. When Jesus finished eating, Jesus says this to his disciples. This has been God's plan all along, that the Messiah should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. And you, he's speaking to his disciples and also speaking to us, and you are witnesses or proclaimers of these things. Now, except for uh, four verses uh, about Jesus ascending into heaven, as I said, we'll celebrate the ascension in about four Sundays, which is the very end of Luke's gospel. Now, remember Luke uh, uh, Luke is, is Luke's volume one, and Acts is Luke's volume two. But Luke ends volume one, the gospel of Luke, uh, with these words from Jesus. You are the, these are the last words Luke has Jesus saying on earth before his ascension into heaven. You are witnesses or proclaimers of these things. And listen, I'm sending upon you what the Father promised, to stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Now, it took 50 days for that message to sink in, uh, but on the day of Pentecost, and we'll celebrate that uh, in about five weeks, about five Sundays, I think my math is right, we'll celebrate Pentecost Sunday, when the Holy Spirit came, and they were clothed with power from on high. They understood what Jesus was talking about. They understood their call, and they went out and changed the world for Christ's sake. This was God's plan all along, Jesus says. Repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Uh, uh, also, at the heart of our faith, daily we walk from the sin in our lives. That's repentance. Daily, we live in God's unmerited grace and forgiveness. And repentance and forgiveness, both are very personal, but repentance together with forgiveness, according to Luke's, Luke's record, is the formula, is the formula the church is to employ to change the world. On that Easter Sunday and on every Sunday after that, through His Holy Spirit, Jesus stands among us and says, look at my hands, look at my feet, it is I, myself. <clears throat> and we are filled with joy and we rejoice and we sing and we give thanks to the Lord of Lords for His steadfast love endures forever. But the joy, the joy must turn into mission and ministry in this broken world that we live in. Thus, it is written, Jesus says, this is God's plan all along, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, uh, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed, proclaimed, proclaimed to all people and to all nations. Pardon the interruption, but Jesus is standing in our midst, offering His peace. Pardon the interruption, but Jesus stands among us today, sending us to proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sin in His name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us close our worship by turning to number 258 and standing together as you are able. And let's sing, sing with all the saints in glory.
thank you, thank you so much. If that doesn't put a spring in your step after you leave here, I don't know what will. But thank you so much for your presence here this morning, your faithfulness to this worship service, and your commitment to the cause of Christ. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. It was a joy to be with you this morning. Will you receive the benediction? May the love of God our Father, the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the indwelling presence of His Holy Spirit be with you right now and forever. Amen. Thank you.